testing. Hello there guys, it's Joel here, aka Galax, and welcome back to my YouTube channel today with a microphone. So I feel more important, if it's your first time. Hello, how are you? I make fashion videos. That's the blanket statement I'm gonna say here on YouTube. Sometimes it's a vlog, sometimes it's, it's just whatever I want it to be, basically. You can find me over on Instagram at G-A-L-L-U-C-K-S, also on TikTok and Twitter as well. I post outfits, videos, um, all the time. <laughs> and I've had this video idea for a long time, the past couple of weeks. If you've seen the title of today's video, we are going to be reviewing some of the shows from the past Men's Fashion Month. Um, Milan, Paris, London. Basically, it shows that I feel like were important to me um, and that I thought were important to the month the fashion month. It's gonna be a long one. So grab a drink, a beverage or a snack and let's get into it. I've done it in alphabetical order simply because it's just easier that way. Uh, so the first show that I wanna discuss is Ami Paris. Ami to me at the very start, like a few years ago is their kind of like their generic logo pieces. That's all I see like in the shops and on the street. But when you look at the shows, there's so much more to it. I do really appreciate the shows and I do really like watching the shows, but I never tend to see the runway pieces. Um, I don't see the department stores buying heaps of them. I see them sticking to their kind of like logo essential pieces for Ami. I recently picked up a piece from one of the last shows, which was the rhinestone mesh tee, which I wore for my birthday. Half a million views on reels, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm obsessed with it. And that was 900 pounds. That is a lot of money for a rhinestone t-shirt. Apparently you can get the same from Santi Ali for not near as much. So, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I should be talking about the show really. Whilst doing some research, I didn't know that Ami was exclusively menswear from 2011 until 2019 um, when they expanded into women's wear. So apparently the inspiration for this show was uh, Parisian. Apparently some of the looks or some of the pieces were modeled on French editors of Vogue, gently mashed together to create a beguilingly approachable and good-natured French wardrobe. It does look very French the more you look at it. I don't know if I'm pronouncing the designer's surname correctly, Matusi, but he said, um, it's still about sharing the values of love, friendship, fraternity, and kindness. Fraternity actually means a group of people sharing a common profession or interest. So it's like they all work at the same place, if you know what I mean. Like they're all colleagues. And he said a really cheesy thing in his views as well. He said the latest episode of Ami in Paris, which is very funny. The thing that stands out to me uh, from this show the most that I love is the uh, white men's shoes that have like a black sole on them they look like little mary janes if you know what i mean um they stood out the most to me like they caught my eye and the little neckerchief styling which i absolutely love so they've taken like a scarf rolled it tied it in a little like scout moment around the neck which is really cute one of the suits as well this white suit literally floored me i think this is the nicest the nicest look my favorite look from the show. Again, to me, Ami is a brand that constantly deliver, but I'm never shocked or I'm never like super excited. I'm just like, oh, that's nice, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's how I feel about Ami. Oh my God. Next up, we have Celine. Eddie Slimon uh, for Celine. Um, so he's still kind of doing the same thing, which at uh, first I hated and now I like. It's very fashion. <laughs> um, so still exploring the kind of new wave Gen Z uh, kind of TikTok vibe, um, but still in keeping with his signature style, which he just does anywhere he goes. But I do like that he's having a lot more fun with it at Celine. Um, like it does, it does feel new. So even from look one at Celine, this is definitely a trend that I've been seeing and it's having a lot of like, chains or metal pieces um just coming off all the clothes uh we'll see it we'll see it in a few other shows as well it's like this like maximalist over embellished kind of vibe i love uh the shape of these blazers i love the 
the shoulder padded tuxedo that we have here, the satin pajama shorts and the chunky boots. Yeah, I actually, this is probably my favorite Celine show since Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. When you look at the collection as a whole, there's not really a color scheme. It's very like normcore in a way, like elevated normcore. Um, there's no like color scheme. There's no like the same prints and all that kind of stuff. It's very like, it's pieces. It's everyday pieces put together, but each piece is fabulous. It's funny because with some brands, I'm more drawn towards like the accessories or the bags. And then some brands I'm more drawn to just the ready to wear. And with Celine, it's definitely the ready to wear that I'm drawn to over the accessories and stuff. Yeah, it's very glam rock, punk. Okay, next up is Dior. Um, so I've been to, I'm lucky enough to have been to a few Dior shows um, in the past few years. I really love Kim Jones and I think he, you know, is a very important designer in the men's fashion space. However, I don't know, Dior, Dior for me sometimes is just hit and miss. Um, there's been some really iconic shows that Kim has done for Dior. Like this recent one to me, and even the one at Venice Beach with, uh, in collaboration with ERL, uh, I wasn't obsessed with, and I don't I don't know what it is. I, it's amazing that he always collaborates with a different artist, but I just feel like we're so numb to collaborations these days. Like he was kind of the uh, catalyst, like Supreme and Louis Vuitton was the catalyst for every single collaboration we've had since then. And um, I know that like that's his thing and it's obviously amazing to give artists a platform. Um, but I feel like, like I said, we're so numb to collaborations at this point that uh, it doesn't really phase me. Like there's been collaborations for different brands in every single capacity, in every single which way, shape or form for so long now that we're just kind of like, oh, again, if you know what I mean? Uh, we saw a lot of double layer shorts, backpacks, zippy camo jackets, poshed up gardening hat and Dior ankle length wellies. So we're seeing a kind of like a uh, pastel color palette. I believe it was meant to be set, like the set was meant to be a mix between, is it Normandy and somewhere in the UK as well, which is quite sweet. But okay, so in, contrast to uh, Celine that we just spoke about, Dior for me is one that I've only ever really been uh, interested in accessories. Uh, the fit of the clothing is too like standard fit for me. It's not got interesting silhouette. The ready to wear has never appealed to me as much as the accessories like the saddlebag 32 B23 sneakers. I just feel like they've had much more. I feel like Kim is very good at nailing those kind of like hot bags and shoes as opposed to the more interesting ready to wear, if you know what I mean. I just, I wasn't really first. And when I say that, I don't mean that I hate Dior, I'm never gonna wear it again. I just mean that this show was okay. So next up on my list, we have Egon Lab. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly because I've never said it out loud. Egon Lab, Egon Lab. Egon Lab. Um, so I wanted to include, uh, I wouldn't say they're a small designer because they are showing at Paris Fashion Week, but I feel like Egon Lab is definitely not as well known as, you know, Celine or Dior. So I want to talk about some smaller designers in this video as well, so that if you didn't know who they were, then you do now. Um, so we had so an interview backstage with Egon Lab with the designer. Again, I'm not gonna try and pronounce his name because I would feel bad that I said it very wrong. He said, we wanted to bring Egon Lab to the street, not just as an elitist brand, but as a brand that belongs to the world. It's not interesting to us to do clothes just for windows. We want people to have fun with our clothes and judging by the crowd, they have found their fan base. I first encountered, encountered Egon Lab via Instagram. Had this amazing lookbook of all these incredible overcoats paired with this elaborate jewelry on every single finger, like a spiky jeweled glove. I can't really remember. If I can find a picture, I'll show it you at the same time. It's cool because Egon Lab feels like a very kind of fresh 
mix of things. Like when I see the ripped denim, I see, you know, Dan for Balenciaga. When I see the houndstooth tailoring with big shoulder pads and little shorts, I see a bit of Tom Brown. When I see thigh high leather boots and a white floor length coat, I see kind of Rick Owens uh, with leather hot pants. I'm just seeing like a big, like amalgamation of many like cues from different designers that have clearly inspired, but it's still different, if you know what I mean. And they, they've they mashed them up together so well. It's it's actually crazy. When you, when you If I had said to you those things, if I said, oh, so we're going to take a bit of Tom Brown, we're going to take a bit of Rick Owens, and we're going to take a bit of Balenciaga and mix them together, I'd be like, mm, that probably wouldn't work. But for Egon Lab, it really does. Even the most recent Prada show, which we'll get onto soon, um, I see like elements of that in here as well, which is so funny to me. It's very interesting. Overall, the d this collection does seem a bit all over the place. Like I don't think it's super cohesive, but I think that is the point of it as well. It's super playful. They're like taking cues from a lot of different designers. They are a very young brand. So it's really interesting to see where they're going to go. I see a lot of pieces in this collection that I would actually purchase myself. Um, and yeah, I like the, the direction that they're going in. It should be, it'll just be interesting to see like kind of if they pivot towards one particular style more so than this kind of mishmash of everything. Next up we have Givenchy, uh, Matthew Williams. Um, so Matthew came from Alix and since being at Givenchy, I've just not, I mean, I've not been bothered. I was a huge Givenchy stan when um, Ricardo Tissi um, introduced like the Rottweiler prints, the Dobermans. I don't know what I expected of Matthew when he started for Givenchy. Actually the last season, so what we're gonna get in the store soon, winter 22. I actually really liked that and it kind of reminded me a bit again of Ricardo's um, Givenchy but a bit more like toned down but still kind of cool and I thought we were heading in more of that direction so then I was really shocked to see this collection how stripped back it was how the logo was just over everything the like pale fluorescent neon colors that some of the pieces were in uh, I just I just didn't yeah, I didn't live for this collection as a whole. Obviously, Matthew has a um, like a cult following from Alix that would probably carry on to Givenchy, um, but I don't know. I feel like he had an opportunity to do something very exciting. It, actually, some of the first like lookbooks he released as well with like the new shape bags. Um, and the kind of this like padlock that he created um, and the like the 4G necklaces and stuff like that. I thought he was gonna really have some fun with it. And this collection, this latest collection, Spring Summer 2023, it was so bland to me. Like it was just so plain. I was really kind of disappointed because I thought we were on an upward trajectory and it just kind of like fell flat for me. He's also created his own version of the BB diamond belt that you can get on Amazon for like 30 pounds. So <laughs> don't buy the Givenchy one. Next up we have Louis Vuitton. So I was uh, devastated to find out that Virgil Abloh had passed away. He'd been a huge inspiration of mine from when I was younger and it was so shocking. Um, and I've never really been affected when a uh, like a celebrity or a designer uh, has passed away. Um, but for Virgil, it just, yeah, it felt very strange and very surreal. We lost truly one of the greatest creatives of our time. I know some people do not agree. <clears throat> Diet Prada. But... Um, you have to give credit where credit is due. He went from he went from doing architecture to becoming the creative director of Louis Vuitton, uh, whilst spawning Off White, a incredibly successful brand that has now has stores all over the world, which is unheard of for like a new brand out of nowhere that started selling T-shirts, becoming this huge force to be reckoned with. Like, it's just he was incredible. Um, so it was very interesting to see what was going to happen, considering that um, 
I'm unaware if he if he had worked on this show or not. But if when you look at the show, you definitely know that everybody that worked towards this show knew what he wanted to do. So on Vogue Runway, it says the untainted vision of a child, not yet spoiled by societal programming. Free play is where Virgil believed creativity happened. As a multidisciplinarian and collaborator across so many fields, you know, DJing, graphic design, furniture design, animation, music, film, museum creation, and more, he saw no boundaries. Um, paper planes landed all over a black suit as a kind of 3D embroidery. Folded paper hats were reproduced in luxurious white leather. A coat was decorated with the contents of a toolbox, scissors and all. The zigzaggy pink hems of shirts and jackets winked towards kids' craft kits. The LV flower symbol was hand crocheted in multicolored wool, all up the sleeves of a denim jacket. At the end of the show, the studio team, Abloh's creative army, followed the marching band to wave goodbye to an era that has been transformative both for them and for the image of what Louis Vuitton can stand for on a global stage. Tomorrow is another day. There will surely be an announcement of the next creative director soon. Big shoes to fill, but this is certain. There can be no turning back on the wealth of equality and openness that Virgil Abloh brought to this industry. I completely agree. The color palette of this show was beautiful. We see a lot of lilacs, white, bright green, um, black and white. It's just like visually so stimulating it's exciting it's fun it's playful it's luxury it's everything overall i think uh the lv team have done an amazing job at continuing virgil's vision i definitely see the continuation of what he was doing for the house i think it was really well done and i do think that virgil would be extremely happy and proud of what uh, they've done without him. <clears throat> that brings me though, very interestingly, to the next designer. Again, a kind of smaller, more under the radar one, which is Martine Rose. She said, I'm interested in lots of different types of people and it's always the people on the edges and in the corners and in the shadows that I wanna hang out with. The effect of the pandemic on me is that I've gone very micro, paying attention to things which maybe I wouldn't have had the time to do so before, she explained while prepping the show. We have a lot of pulled effects, the feeling of pressure and tension, sexual tension. <laughs> all right, for a start, she had all eyes magnetized to the crotch area, cloth pulled awkwardly toward flies, which seemed to have been hurriedly miszipped, an effect re emphasized by the dangle of ring pulls and keychains. Again, like we saw at Celine, with a lot of like chains and keyrings and things hanging off jackets and garments, we're seeing that in Martine Rose collection as well, which is very interesting. It says here that Rose was early in on the oversizing of men's fashion that swept the industry. She was at Demna's side at Balenciaga with all of his tendency to XXL volumes. She's continuing her with her roomy, jack roomy jacketed suit for spring, but is angling her tailing towards women as well. A big tweed quote coat thrown over a satin club dress was the women's version to start with. Her commercial flair in creating an entire wearable wardrobe was fully on display, as were her funny, brilliant, as were her brilliant, funny tweak to the design of her Nike collab trainers. Okay, these Nike shops are so nice. I really, really want the white pair. They are so cool. These came out at the same time as the Jacquemus collab, and everyone's obsessed with the Jacquemus collab. But I think that's, I don't like it. I don't think it's good. This is what people should be paying attention to, but no one is paying attention to it. I've always loved the kind of general direction that Martin's been going on. And I have over the years, like, mmm and ahed over a few different pieces, but never, like, pulled the trigger. But this collection literally has so many pieces that I would actually buy. And I do think, uh, like she said, it was, for this one, it was concentrating more on, like, the kind of, interesting people and focusing on the small attention to detail like what what was the other show like what i was saying about celine before is that it's focusing more on like like normcore in the sense that everyday pieces but like elevated versions of those pieces which is what demna has been doing with balenciaga and vetmont for years and obviously martine was with demna so it kind of makes sense that she's following along in those footsteps Interestingly enough, Michael Burke, CEO of Louis Vuitton, came from Paris to view Rose's show, which is a big indication that they are considering her potentially for the to take over from Virgil Abloh at Louis Vuitton. 
I think it will be amazing and interesting, but I'm still unsure as to whether she will take over from Virgil or not. Okay, next on the list is MSGM. The designer mentions a tension between the natural and the virtual, humanity and technology. How can you square dystopia and utopia? Given Giorgetti's positive nature, he envisioned a way out, a realm of possibilities where hope and escapism reign supreme, inhabited by a posse of MSGM-clad young optimists. Padding around the stretch of water and under an unmercifully hot sun, models sported looks with an escapist, carefree surfer vibe. Humongous Bermudas, boxy shirts in crisp cotton or denim, and ultra short shorts were printed with tropicalia, hibiscus, bananas, and lots of marine creatures. Underwear peaked out from slouchy drawstring pajama pants, worn slightly more formally under fluid blazers with printed lapels paired with matching midriff bearing crop shirt. Striped knits in MSGM's eye-popping palette of brights were layered and mixed together in freestyle mode. MSGM to me as well is a brand that uh, if you're in if you're in the fashion industry, then you are aware and know of them. But most people outside of the fashion space aren't really clued up um, about MSGM, which is a shame because they are such an interesting brand. Um, and I really, really love this show in particular. I thought it was incredible. Again, we saw cowboy hats. Definitely um, a trend. Trend alert. I love the printed denim, the contrast stitch denim, the ties, the pink bananas, the kind of rugby style tops as well. Going back to what I was saying before about Egon Lab, Egon Lab, the collection looked very mismatched and not very cohesive, whereas this collection from MSGM looks so cohesive. Like you can tell they're from the same collection, if you know what I mean. Um, I love the inspirations. I love the tailoring. I love how fun this is as well. Like, this is definitely super wearable. I can see a lot of guys, girls, they, them wearing a lot of these pieces. And yeah, I'm just, I'm low key. No, not even low key. I'm high key obsessed with this. Prada. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, again, so Prada for me is a. Uh, accessories. I look at the accessories. I look at the shoes. I look at the bags. There have been some pieces over the past few seasons um, like of ready to wear that I was interested in, like uh, Raph's bomber jackets and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure what's happened the past two seasons, but Raph and Prada have seemed to like go off in a different direction. And I'm not liking that direction. <laughs> Uh, it's just not to my taste. Um, like the last spring summer kind of collection that we saw like a lot of, was it the like backwards sun hats and then like the the tops with the backpacks in and, and the little short shorts. I, I just, I wasn't feeling it. I don't know what it is. They said that the idea behind this recent collection was choice. I like the little leather short shorts and that was about it. So Raf said, the, com the garments are classic, but their mix contradicts, making them exciting and new. There is leather against the body and then cotton on the top. It's kind of anti-logic to the combination of clothes and oddness. Kirky, kinky corporate normcore and craft. The ingredients in the menswear minestrone of a Prada collection look pretty weird on the menu, but tasted fresh when seen on the flesh. Uh, I disagree, Vogue Runway. I... I was not living for for this version of Raf's Prada. The most interesting thing to me was uh, the leather shorts and the kind of Cuban heel boots with the like turned up toe. And apart from that, I didn't love it. I didn't love the denim. I didn't, everything was just normcore, but not elevated. You know how I was saying like Martin and Celine were everyday pieces, but with that like high fashion twist, but in a way that I like, I guess, whereas this is not what I like. It's very plain. It's very like, there's no silhouette. There's no drama. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a little bitch for drama, but yeah, it was fine. Took a snooze pill while at Prada, didn't he? Sorry, Raph. Love you. Maybe he's saving his good ideas for something else. 
Next we have Rick Owens. Now the set for Rick Owens was incredible. If you have been on Instagram, if you were on Instagram a few weeks ago and you follow like men's fashion stuff, you might have seen it. It was like a flaming ball suspended by a chain. Supposed to represent um, the end of the world, which is fun. Always a, always a joyful occasion with Rick Owens. He said, the fireballs are flaming suns, arcing across the sky and crashing to the ground. But I did it on repeat because it happens over and over. <laughs> and I know he's being 100% serious because he's like an incredible, like creative mind. Um, but it just makes me laugh. I don't know. Uh, I didn't like this collection. It was very colorful. <laughs> it was very colorful. Um, I'm not a huge fan. Like I said, it's either ready to wear or accessories for me. And Rick Owens for me is definitely more the accessories. Like I only really appreciate like the sneakers and the footwear. I'm not really into Rick's ready to wear and this even more so. Like I just, if anything in general overall, I prefer winter clothing cause I like layering big jackets and I like volume and I like texture. So yeah, I don't know. It just felt a bit airy fairy and a bit like, I don't know. It was like a weird crossover between like Rick Owens and then like high viz, like yellows and pinks and stuff. And then it was very like Burning Man, which again is fine. And it's interesting for Rick Owens. And it's like a bit of a different kind of direction. I guess you can't just do the same thing all the time. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing at the Rick Owens show was the set design. Vetmont or VTMNTS. I honestly don't know what's happened with this brand at the moment. So it's Demna's brother. Um, the collection was amazing. I love this collection. It was, I think it was live streamed. I don't think people went to this. I think they just released a video, uh, which is fine. I love the collection. I thought it was really, really cool. And uh, there was a lot of like crop jackets. It was I think the whole guy, like guys, was that it was supposed to be uh, like truly unisex, like all genders. We saw a lot of like block colors. We saw some shilling jackets. We saw cropped blazers. We saw oversized bomber jackets. Uh, we saw a lot of thigh high boots. We've seen a lot of thigh high boots this season, um, which is interesting. I don't know. I thought it was a very strong collection. I'm just very confused by what Vetmont is doing at the moment. I know this is like a set. Is it the same as there's Vetmont, but then there's VTMNTS as well. And I thought there was another one at 1.2 and it's, it was like a barcode one. I just don't know what's going on with it. And um, yeah, it was a nice collection. <laughs> so why project, if you don't know, is uh incredible brand from um glenn martins uh who is now creative director of diesel and doing an incredible job there so they say here on vogue runway um instead of nudes this time the emphasis was on impressing the dress down classic y project jeans and vests and polos on slips and rib knits. There were hilarious flip finger earrings and four evil baby tops whose drawn on distended bodies were based on a much regretted tattoo on a drunk British guy that Martins had met while developing the collection. As you can see these little like uh, long sleeve tops, but you have like a little print here of like a person's hands like flipping the bird and stuff like that. And then they're just really, really fun. Possibly the most striking innovation of all this season's flying buttress were the apparently impossible tank top suspended at the shoulder by nearly invisible wiring. So we're seeing these tanks here that literally are joined here by a very, very thin piece of wire, which is so crazy, um, but I absolutely love it. I think it looks incredible. It's very aesthetically pleasing. And the central architectural device underpinning all this seasonally adjusted weirdness remained the malleable wire endoskeletons that allow tailoring denim and alien evening wear to be distorted into shockwave shapes. Wire project is always a feast for the eyes and it's always something you can really get your teeth into if you are um, interested in that kind of thing. I know we, can, we can't like compare designers like next to each other one by one um but we as uh customers and fans of like uh fashion and design 
uh, obviously drawn to some things more than others and I'm much more drawn to Glenn's, Glenn's way of designing here at Y Project and at Diesel than I am to Matthew at Alix and Givenchy. I just feel like Glenn, what Glenn is doing is a lot more kind of interesting, innovative, disruptive, more kind of like pushing the boundaries of what like fashion design can be. And, and there's nothing wrong with what Matthew is doing at Givenchy. It's very minimalist. It's very safe. It's very, it's very calm. It's very, you know, but that's his aesthetic. And there's a lot of people that like that. Obviously Givenchy saw something in Matthew as well. Um, and it's not that I don't, I love Alix. I thought it was really cool. Obviously the uh, roller coaster buckle that got introduced and then Kim kind of adopted that for Dior now as well. I don't know how that's worked out because they still use that even on the Birkenstocks. They still use the roller coaster buckle. Um, so it's just all very interesting. There's a lot of collabs. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of stuff happening everywhere. Everything is interlinked and intertwined. The project was amazing. I absolutely loved Um that's what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, that is my <laughs> fashion month roundup of shows that I thought were like of note to me personally. It's my YouTube channel, so I can say and do whatever the hell I want. Uh, if you don't agree with it, write it in the comments. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will. But yeah, I just wanted to sit down and kind of like recap and go over everything that's kind of happened. Um, just for myself as well, really, to kind of like understand what I like about certain things, what I don't like about certain things, um, what intrigued me, what kind of things I will be looking to shop within the next, you know, year or so as well. Because even though I have my own like personal style identity as well, uh, it's amazing to be able to like digest all of this information from all of these different creatives and then you kind of navigate your own personal style uh, through with the help of these people as well it's it's um what a time to be alive if you know what i mean but that's why yeah i wanted to just recap everything and sit down talk to you guys see what you guys think of everything that's going on as well this is probably the longest youtube video i've ever made so if you like this video don't forget to subscribe um let me know what you thought in the comments below and hopefully i will see you in the next one don't forget to follow me on instagram if you haven't already and i'll see you soon Bye guys!